It's Double Base Day, the series where we take two whiskeys and put them head to head to break down the differences and similarities they may have. This week, uh, on Monday, I reviewed Blacken times Willet and got a bunch of requests to compare it to High West Midwinter's Night's Dram and the Barrel Seagrass. Ah, let's call it a triple base. What's up, folks? I am Jason C. from The Mass and Drum, and welcome to Double Bass, which will now be a weekly segment right here on The Mass and Drum. What I'll be doing each week is bringing you an in-depth review on Monday, an episode of What's on the Shelf Wednesday, and then capping off the week with a Double Bass comparison. So a bunch of comments on Monday's video to compare this to High West, Midwinter's Night's Dram, and also the Barrel Seagrass. So that's what we're gonna do today, but if you guys have any other comparison suggestions, please let me know down in the comments since I will be doing one of these every week. So let's dive into today's double bass. Well, triple bass. First, uh, let's check out the bottles. First is the Blackened Times Willet Kentucky Straight Rye Whiskey finished in Madeira casks. This starts with a base of low rye and high rye whiskey recipes that were handpicked by Rob Dietrich and Willet Distillery's master distiller Drew Colesveen uh, from the Willet Family Estate Reserve selection. Now the press release states the whiskey is as old as eight years with an average of six and a half years, but exact percentages are undisclosed. After the rye whiskeys are married together, they are finished in Madeira casks for up to 14 weeks. During finishing, the whiskey undergoes that proprietary black noise sonic enhancement process. This is bottled at 109.6 proof. It's available now in limited quantities for an MSRP of about 140 bucks. Barrel Seagrass is one of the newer blends from Barrel Craft Spirits. Now this is a blend of American rye and Canadian rye that is finished in a combination of Martinique rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy casks. The product was developed by Barrel Craft Spirits founder Joe Beatrice, uh, Chief Whiskey Scientist Trip Stimson, Chief Product Innovation Officer Will Schragus, and Assistant Blender Nick Christensen. It's an ode to Coastal Memories, bottled at 118.4 proof, non-chill filtered, and retails for about 90 bucks. Lastly is arguably High West's most anticipated release, a Midwinter Night's Dram, which is a limited annual release that consists of High West Rendezvous Rye finished in French oak port barrels. Now the theme of the whiskey is inspired by William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. Now the last three years, High West has started adding their own distillate to the blend, going back to Act 6. This is a blend of straight rye, which is a comprised of a 95.5 rye from MGP, and 80% rye and 20% malted rye from High West Distillery. This is bottled at 98.6 proof, retails for about 90 bucks, and we usually see this come out towards the end of the year, towards the holidays. So I'll be comparing these blind and just kind of doing my own rating to rate the nose, palate, and finish to help pick my favorite. Let's see what my rank will be. First, let's mix them up. Let's see what my, uh, my favorite will be. This should be an interesting blind tasting here. Okay, let's go to A first. Man, A is spicy. Extremely fruity on the nose. Peppery. This is a mix of like bubble gum and strawberry and mint. Man, that thing is, uh, that, that has a really nice nose. It's just peppery, strawberry, it's minty. Um, also getting like a little bit of, man, it's super fruity. It's, I think I'm getting like some banana in there. I don't know what the hell that is. All right, let's go to B. All right, B is cinnamon, plum wine, grape. Man, you do get some rye spice in there too. Remember all three of these are rye, so. Man, a little bit of chocolate and raisin. Yeah, I'm digging the nose on that one. All right, let's go to the last one here. Holy crap, coming off these two, this is all like strawberry shortcake. <laughs> strawberry shortcake, mint. Again, chocolate in here too. 
God, all three of these are really, really sweet on the nose, which, which I, you know, anticipated, you know, realizing that these are all, uh, you know, these are all super, I mean, just crazy finishes on all three of these rye whiskeys. Man, the nose on B is really good. Hmm. I'm actually going to give the nose to letter A. Letter A just has some really great flavors. It's really punchy and pungent. Really digging that one. I think, man, B. I'll see has some really rich flavors too. Uh, B is probably the softest, but still enticing flavors. But A and C are really bringing some powerful notes. So I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give number one the nose to A. Uh, number, let's see, letter C, I'm going to give uh, second place, and last place is a, very close, is a letter B. So let's try it on the palate. And all sorts of crazy flavors in there. Man, I'm getting... I am getting a little bit of that bubble gum, getting cotton candy, getting a lot of rich fruits too. I'm getting like, I'm still getting I think a little bit of banana in there, I think it is. Definitely some mint. It's got a nice spice to it from front to back. That one's really good. It's also, you know, it's, it's also very viscous on the palate. It's very creamy. I'm digging that one. All right, let's go to B. Mm. B is good, but compared to A, it's definitely a lot softer. Um, but man, the like I said, like that wine, grape, chocolate, raisin, a little bit of rye spice really comes through on this one. There's there's no doubt about the flavors on here. I mean, they're really uh, powerful, even though it's coming off a little bit lighter on the palate. Getting more, the second sip gave me more spice on the back end, which I did, uh, did enjoy, but I'm not sure it's as powerful as A. Let's go to letter C here. Yeah, letter C is bringing like the strawberry, still the strawberry, a lot of mint, probably the spiciest out of all three. There's a really beautiful lingering spice that's going on and on and on here. Ooh, that's good. Man, as far as palate, it's between C and A. B has some really great flavors, but man, against these other two, I mean, maybe the middle one is the high west because it is a lower proof compared to the other two. Let's go to A. Yeah, A is super complex. I'm digging A. But C has the spice. Man, it's got some really good spice to it. So for palate, I'm gonna have to give it to A again. I'm gonna give it A on the palate. Uh, C again will come in second, and then palate for B, I think it will come in last. Um, so A is kind of taking over a little bit here. So let's go to finish now. And I think I already know what's gonna win finish because C is kind of bringing that spice. Man, A has just so many interesting flavors to it. It just keeps evolving every time I go back to it. Now I'm starting to get some fruit flavors here, a lot more like bright fruits, uh, the strawberry, the chocolate. There's a little bit of saltiness there. Definitely kind of drying on the back end, actually, of the palate, which I don't necessarily love. Uh, let's go to B here. Man, B has a really beautiful finish. 
there's a lot of flavors in B that I'm getting on the finish. And it's actually getting more of a lingering spice the more I sip this. I mean, it's just a ton. It's like a cinnamon, raisin, chocolate bomb. Maybe some wine flavors in there too. Friggin' delicious. I'm, I'm digging the finish on B. I think I actually like it over A. It's not as strong. It's just the flavors though that I'm getting are delicious. I like the flavors on the finish on, on B over A. So, so far B is taking the finish. Let's go to C. C has a spice factor that goes from front to back. Just throughout the entire experience. That's just delicious. But man, I, I don't know what to give the finish to, either C or B. I think just overall, I would take the finishes on B and C over A. So you could give the finish to B and C, but A did win nose and palate. So I think in the matchup, I might have to give my favorite to A, but man, the finish does kind of leave something to be desired for me and I'm loving the finish on B and C. I don't know, all three of these are really good. I'm gonna have to give my favorite to number one here. I'll put C in second place and three in last place. Um, again, when you do these blinds and when you're tasting ones against each other, you know, proof is gonna matter. Proof is gonna, you know, prove a point here. Uh, the higher the proof, it might take over something that's a little bit of a lower proof. And I think that's what's happening here. I'm gonna guess that letter, uh, the one I put in last place, could be Midwinter's Night's Tram. Let's see. Yes, this is the High West. Now, this is no knock on High West. This is an absolutely delicious rye. Um, but again, like I said, it's a little bit of a softer type of pour because the proof's a little bit low. But man, the flavors in this thing, it, it, it is. It's really, it really is the perfect like Christmas uh, whiskey with all those flavors, um, you know, cinnamon, nutmeg, all those really rich fruits, just and Midwinter Night Stram is definitely one of my favorite, uh, maybe my, maybe the favorite release that High West does. All right, now this will be interesting because I really couldn't tell which one was maybe the Seagrass or the Blackened. Uh, let's see here. I was gonna, I was gonna guess that this one could have been the Seagrass. Wait, what? Okay. All right. <laughs> Second place went to the blackened, and first place goes to the seagrass. Holy shit. There's my lineup. The barrel seagrass, I think I picked just because it was so friggin' unique, which it really is. Seagrass is kind of a, I mean, you're, you're looking at, what I say, Martinique rum, Madeira, and apricot brandy. I mean, you would think it's overly sweet, but it's not. You get a lot of good spice in it. The only thing I wasn't crazy about was the, the finish, as you guys know, that the blackened coming in with a really close, really good showing to the, to the first place barrel seagrass. This one might be the, the most rounded because it's got great flavor, it's got great spice, um, it's got a great finish too, nothing drying. It just on the palate, it's a little bit more straightforward and not as complex as the seagrass. Whereas the High West comes in last place, and I think that really only happened because of the proof. But if this was on its own, not against higher proof, uh, uh, higher proof bottles, I think it just it, it would have done just fine. You know, if you can't find one or the other, if you could pick up one of these, if any of you out there can actually just find one, you'll still be really happy. All three of them are absolutely delicious. This was a this was a fun uh, triple base, I should say. All right, guys, I well, hope you enjoyed this double bass slash triple bass episode of The Mass and Drum. Remember, I'll be doing these every week from now on. So leave a comment below if you have an idea uh, for a comparison that you want to see me do. If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button below. Please hit the like button. If you haven't yet, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Remember, leave a comment down below, and it's not about the whiskey. It's the people you share with. So cheers, and I'll see you next time right here on The Mass and Drum. Take care, folks. I'm going to blend all three. Nope, nope, no good.